Alright, hi guys, it's Ellipsis here, and today I'm going to be bringing you uh, the Guardian build that I've been using in SPVP for the last couple of weeks now, uh, and I really enjoyed it. It's a nice survivable build, and it also dishes out a fair bit of damage. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, jump right into the traits. Having a look now, we're going to see that we're going with a 00644 build, um, and I'm going to go ahead and explain that why, uh, explain why that is, um, starting with the Valor Tree. So, Real quick, we're going to be picking up number four, strength in numbers. So nearby allies gain toughness based on your effective level. Our effective level is level 80. Um, so we're uh, we're going to be getting 150 toughness just for being around allies, and our allies are also going to gain that toughness, uh, which is really really good. Moving ahead now, we're going to be getting purity. So conditions, uh, you lose conditions at a set interval. Uh, so it's going to be one condition removed every 10 seconds. It's not all that much, but it is good. And honestly, there aren't all that many traits that I'd like to take, um, you know, in this in, in this build. We could go for honorable shield um, if we really wanted to, um, and that's completely up to you guys. It just means you get a little bit more survivability there with the knockback and stuff. Um, but I found that purity works as well, um, and we do have a lot of condition removed with this build. Moving up, we're going to be getting retributive armor. So we're not actually going to be taking any of these three, uh, any of these three, what's it called, traits, that's what I'm looking for. We're all going to be, we're going to be getting three of these adept traits, which is really, really weird to be seeing in a build, but trust me, it's been working really well, and you'll see, um, you'll see that, um, just in the, in the gameplay that I'm going to be showing you later. So, that's what I've taken there. Moving down into the honor tree, we are going to be taking, uh, resolute healer. So when you, when you start resing a teammate or a downed ally, uh, you're going to be creating a shield of absorption, uh, which knocks back, and then also uh, absorbs projectiles, which is going to be good. Um, so this is going to be a relatively team supporting build, as you can see from this, and strength in numbers. Um, then we've also got selfless daring, so at the end of your dodge roll, you heal nearby allies. We don't have any healing power, really, so you're not going to notice this heal. But um, we do have it, I mean, you are going to just be getting a little bit of healing when you dodge anyway, which is always nice. So, Empowering Might. You and nearby allies gain might when you land a critical hit. This is going to synergize really, really well with the sigils we've taken, and just by saying that, I, I apparently, I guess some of you guys will be able to, uh, to tell what that is, but we are going to be getting might from that, which is always good. Moving down into Virtues, we're going to be getting Vengeful for Retaliation Last Longer, 25% duration increase, which is going to be very, very good. It means that while the, uh, you know we don't have to keep refreshing, we've got a better uptime on Retaliation, which is obviously a very, very good boon to have. And then moving up, we're going to be getting Indomitable Courage. So activating Virtue of Resolve, uh, Virtue of Courage, so it grants stability to nearby allies, and Virtue of Courage's uh, passive effect triggers more frequently. So if we decide to use it, we're going to be getting three and a half seconds of stability, and it now triggers every 30 seconds that we get uh, that free Aegis, which is always really nice, because it means we don't have to activate it as often, um, and we can use it more for securing stomps. So those are the traits. Um, moving up into the equipment now, you can see that we are going to be running with the Rune of Strength. Um, it's just an, obviously a very, very good rune right now, um, and it has been since the April 15th patch, I believe. Um, so we're going to be getting power and might duration from this, um, 25 power, then 50, and 100 as well. And then we're going to be getting the 4 and 6 abilities, which are really, really great. So gain 15% might duration. And 25% chance when struck to gain might for 10 seconds. That's good. We get a little bit more damage just from getting hit. And then the number 6 is going to be very, very good. You get plus 7% damage while under the effects of might. So just by getting a might stack, we're going to be uh, getting plus 7% damage. Now, where does that come in with uh, the synergy and how does it work well with this build? Having a look over at Virtue of Justice, you can see that we're going to be getting might for, you, for activating that which is going to be good, so we're going to get plus 7% damage when we hit our F1 skill, but then also, uh, when we when we land a critical hit, we, uh, we are going to be able to get a stack of might. So, when we look at our sigils now, we can see the sigil of intelligence, your next three attacks after swapping to this weapon while in combat have 100% critical chance. So three crits guaranteed our next three abilities when we swap over to this weapon set. We're going to be getting uh, those stacks of might. We've got that um, on both of our weapons. Then we're also going to get um, Sigil of Battle. So you gain three stacks, of, three stacks of might when you swap to this weapon in combat. So just from swapping weapons, we can get up to six stacks of might, which is obviously very, very good. And then we're going to be running with a Soldier's Amulet for the power, toughness, and vitality. Obviously very, very good. Um, worth mentioning, 
you've probably already noticed from my little sort of standing here, we are going to be running the sword and board build. Uh, so it's going to be obviously a one-handed sword and a shield. Um, so those are going to be the ones. They're, they're both very good weapons. Um, obviously, we get a little bit of healing from the shield of absorption over there. Um, and we're also going to be using our greatsword. Greatsword is obviously being a very, very strong weapon for the Guardian. Uh, it's got a lot of CC and it's got um, a lot of damage on it as well. Moving over to uh, the three out of the four or five utility skills, we are going to be running with Shelter because it does block attacks, gives you a relatively decent heal, and it's only on a 30 second cooldown, so that's, you know, that pops relatively often enough. Gain stability for yourself and allies, and break stuns, right? So we're going to be getting retaliation here when we, uh, when we activate this, and then we're also going to get six seconds of stability to secure ourselves some stumps, and also just getting onto a point to make sure that we can uh, mitigate a little bit of CC. Uh, contemplation of purity, um, convert the conditions you're suffering from into boons, so if we get, uh, if we're fighting a necromancer, signal of spite, boom, contemplation of purity, those are all suddenly boons, this can be very, very beneficial. Uh, you also do have to watch out for corrupt boons when you're running contemplation of purity, um, but, you know, if we, we've got a lot of condition removal this build regardless, so, you know, it's gonna be good, all good. And then we're also running with save yourselves. Now, save yourselves is gonna be a very, very good one as well, it's gonna give us, um, a stack of might, which again, just by activating that, is going to give us um, set plus seven percent damage. But we're not going to take that because it, well, that's not why we're taking it because it is a sixty-second cooldown. We're going to be taking it because it draws conditions from nearby allies to yourself. Right. So if we're in a team fight and all of our allies get hit with a bunch of conditions, we can you save yourself to so bring them all onto us and then immediately hit contemplation of purity to get rid of those conditions altogether, which is going to be very very good, obviously. Um, and then we're going to be running with renewed focus because it's just such a strong utility. We get um, impervious to damage or um, immune to damage for two seconds, uh, and then also it recharges our virtues so we can go ahead and get our might or our heal or our Aegis or whatever, um, which is obviously going to be very very good. So that's the build. We are going to end up with uh, almost 20k health, which is going to be good for a Guardian, and it's a relatively survivable build. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and jump into the clips now. So the first one is just going to be me coming out of the clock tower on Battle of Kylo, um, because I'm getting hit pretty hard with the trebuchet. I used to use my heal, uh, so now I'm heading over the treb, and I'm going to be getting pretty low on health here um, in just a minute. So while we wait for me to get over to this trebuchet... Here we go. Okay, so we see this an engineer right here. I start off with my Whirling Wrath, uh, and then I also put down my field to get a little bit of retaliation, a little bit more damage, and then I switch over to my sword uh, and just sort of hit all my cooldowns really. I notice he's running turrets, um, so I, I'm going to have to be pretty careful here. Using my Shield of Absorption to get a little bit more damage mitigation and a little bit more health, and I'm getting thrown all over the place here. Uh, but basically my thought here is that I'm keeping him off the trebuchet, which is helping my team. Uh, we did end up losing the trebuchet, uh, the mid-fight, but we didn't. Uh, we actually capped the side notes, so it worked out in our favor um, in the end. So now I notice that this is coming in just uh, using a bunch of, uh, of those heart seekers, but I do manage to get out of here pretty quickly. I uh, just jumping off the edge, I'm low on health, and I just notice he's poking me with his with his attacks, which is annoying. So I use my uh, I use my big jumpy swingy thingy. <laughs> I keep forgetting the name of it anyway. And then blinding blades back into him to put a little bit of blind, get some damage mitigation and heal, and then shield absorption for the healer as well. And I you can see I'm just melting this thief in the incredibly low amount of health that I started off with. Uh, there is a lot of damage mitigation in this build. I am going to be able to get him into the down state right here. Very good, and so now, um, obviously the Guardian does win this down fight, um, just because he's got the self heal, um, and then uh, the knockback, which doesn't actually do anything but it's damage. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna actually end up getting up here in just a second, but I thought this was a good clip to use, um, because it shows how much damage this build can do. You saw the engineer was getting to about half health, um, and I also managed to kill this thief from about 2k or 4k health or something like that. Uh, it was pretty good. Um, so I'm actually just looking for him right now, and I just keep missing that little arrow in the corner, but I will see it in a minute. There we go. Um, and I end up getting rezzed by a teammate, and we're just going to go ahead and finish off um, and just DPS this thief down in just a second here. Alright, this next clip is going to be again on the middle point, um, and we've got this point capped right now. Uh, so what we need to do here, or what I need to do being the only person on this node, is just keep it capped for as long as possible. He's putting down his bombs, which is going to be dangerous for me, but I can't really risk jumping off of that point, um, just because, you know, I'm going to have to, I can't risk the decap. 
Um, so I am just going to be standing here trying to mitigate as much of that damage as I can using my dodge rolls, using my shelter block, um, as well as heal. So you can see I'm incredibly high on health. I probably shouldn't have used it just now. But that's alright. We can see he's used his supply crate, um, which means that his elite's completely gone. I'm just going to use my whirling wrath to DPS some of those turrets he put down. And this is the mistake I made here. I used my renewed folks, I really shouldn't have done that because it means that he did get the decap, but he's low enough on health, I just DPS'd him down a little bit here. Um, and I also could have gone for the second spike um, after this knockback, but I didn't really want to risk going down as well because he did have his turrets up and it could have gone either way, but we are going to win this fight in just a second here, so I actually do, I just cut out this clip. Now, this last one I wanted to show more of the survivability of the build. Um, so it's going to be in a team queue right now, just uh, we did trio queue, and you can see I'm going to be just getting this spike right here, using my uh, save yourself to draw some conditions for my allies as well as get stability to secure that kill, and I'm going to get one of the pugs just, just going into the downstate right here. Starting off that res, you can see shield of absorption working its magic, I absorbed some of that um, necromancer's damage, got the res on my teammate, which actually gives our team um, the outnumbered fight. We are fighting off point here, but we do make our way um, onto the node in just a second. Um, and you can see that this this build is really survivable. I'm going to be coming into a bit of damage right here. Um, and my teammate goes into the downstairs again. So I'm going to get start working on that res, get him nice and high. And then I notice that I'm getting low, so I heal up. And then while, uh, while that happened, the Necromancer went into the downstate. So I secure that spike because I know it'll get my teammate back up at the downstate nice and easy. Um, and we get the neutralize on this node. And I should be able to actually... Oh, we're going to cap this point um, in just a second here. Um, but the score was too high at this point. We ended up um, winning this match relatively easily. Um, but you can see I did get two spikes there as well as a res uh, without too much without too much trouble. So that's going to be the last of the clips right now. Um, don't forget to check me out on Twitter. My Twitter handle is on the screen right there, um, Ellipsis Blank. I do put my twitch.tv channel, um, even though I can't really stream right now, I'm trying to work on that. But yeah, um, subscribe to that, follow it or whatever, um, so you can check me out if I do actually start streaming at any point. We'll see what happens.